cyber behavior is an extension of human behavior, abstracted, accelerated, and, and changed to a degree, but it is still human behavior. And ultimately, it's directed by humans, at least for now, until our, our robot overlords arrive, for human ends. Again, for now, until our robot, robot overlords arrive. So, and Colin will be seeking to accelerate that timeline in his presentation. So, so what does that mean? It means that there are physical analogs to cyberspace activities. Are they perfect one-for-one -one matches? No, uh, no, nothing is ever a one-for-one -one match in this. But you can take human experience elsewhere and learn from it and apply it into cyberspace activities. Again, so what? All right, so what we have now is a situation where we have extremists, religious, political, and other, living amongst the general population, hiding amongst them, and seeking to overturn the society. And in, in this case, we'll use society as people who are on cyberspace, people who use cyber, and want to use it for their um, non-nefarious means. They want to do their business, they want to run their governments, they, they want to update their Facebook, they want to surf whatever content they want to surf. I'm not judging. Um, <laughs> and th that's the society of cyber cyberspace. They want to go do this. And amongst, the, amongst them are people who want to change that, who want to use that system, overturn it to their own ends, and exclusive ends. So we have a situation where extremists co-op less radical movements, where extremists engage in criminal activities and partnerships uh, to fund their efforts, where nation states use as proxies extremist groups to further their, their ends. What is the situation in the analog world? That's an insurgency. And an insurgency that's uh, called the wicked problem by David McClellan def defined it as dynamic interactions of constantly changing sets of problems. The wicked problem. All right, so definition of an insurgency by, from Miriam Webster, and I'll take an aside to thank Mr. Webster once again <laughs> for cleaning up the language because the Queen had let her English get a little messy. <laughs> <laughs> the quality of state of being insurgent, specifically a condition of revolt against a government that is less than organized revolution and that is not re recognized as a belligerency. Okay, so that is definitely a very physical definition. But if you take the norms of cyberspace behavior, what is generally accepted as beneficial to the majority of the population, there are those out there who are seeking to overturn those norms and seeking to come be, act as insurgents to that. If you want to get into a more uh, doctrinal definition of insurgency, Joint Doctrine defines it as an insurgency as an organized movement aimed at the overthrow of a constituted government through the use of conversion and armed conflict. Stated another way, an insurgency is an organized, pro -acted, protracted political military struggle <laughs> designed to weaken the control and legitimacy of an established government occupying power or other political authority with increasing insurgent control. So we are in a situation where we lack that uh, central government situation. Um, we have multiple nation states which have varying degrees. That, you know, the Westphalian model does not translate perfectly into cyberspace, but it does have impact. Um, but we, I think we can come up with a very loose, wide, accommodating uh, concept of what cyberspace is for most people and how they want to use it, and that there definitely are those out there who are looking to overthrow that model. So, from there, um, how do, what are we going to do about it? Okay. So when you have an insurgency, you conduct a counterinsurgency. Coin was the word of the of the day a few years back of how to conduct a counterinsurgency. It fell out of use because, honestly, because counterinsurgency is grindingly boring, not sexy at all, does not give itself over to bumper stickers and, and mottos. 
it's a lot of hard work. And there's no one agency that can pull it off. So uh, comprehensive civilian and military efforts taken to defeat an, ins an insurgency and to address core grievances. Therefore, an effective strategy to deal with cyber insurgency must transcend simple law enforcement due to the limited scope and resources of law enforcement, and also transcends the, because of its transnational nature, transcends the powers of central governments. Do you need both? Yes. Can you use either only? No. But more importantly, you need the denizens of the space, the citizens of cyberspace, to be par willing participants in helping in the, in the counterinsurgency. All of these have to come together. So that makes it the wicked problem. How do you coordinate all of these efforts? How do you give them some direction when you can't put out a bumper sticker saying, yay, go team? It, ha it has to be very nuanced, has to be tailored. How do we pull this off? So, not to get too cynical, but it, it's, it's a tough problem. Can it be done? Yes. So, one of the main issues that any kind of insurgency runs into is that the bad guys will do bad things. And one of the reasons they do these bad things is to cause a reaction from whatever force they wish to react. Whether it's a government, a police force, a corporation, another organization, they will elicit a response. And the idea of that response is to cause damage to the people that they're hiding amongst. So in a physical environment, a terrorist will make an action in an attempt to cause an excessive police or military reaction, which then is oppressive to the population, which causes a, a negative feeling to go back on to the police or the military that's doing the reaction. So they're eliciting excessive response. That has to be avoided. Um, same thing happens in, in cyberspace. You see it sometimes where... An actor does an exploit or makes a statement, and a corporation will have an excessive response in how to counter that. That is part of their idea. That's their plan, is to cause that excessive reaction. So, you, so the minimum force, maximum effect dictate is, is, is key. And that's, that's the catch-22 of, of insurgency and terrorism, that if you react strongly, then you're playing into their hands. If you don't react at all, you're seen as impotent. So you have to be very careful, but effective. Um, the inherent asymmetry of, we, we've, I won't get too much into it because pe people earlier have talked about the asymmetry and I think they covered it rather well, so I'll skip back of that. Asymmetry is inherent into an insurgency because nobody attacks the strength. You always go after a weakness. That is standard predatory behavior. So it is, by definition, what's going to be, what's going to paint this entire picture is an asymmetry. So it's not something that you can bother complaining about. It is the reality of it. That's the definition of it. So we have a fairly large body of work on how to conduct insurgencies and counterinsurgencies in the physical world. Um, and I think that we can probably draw from some of those. Um, the strategy has to come out. There ha does have to be a strategic overview. We are struggling with that. I think uh, Everybody's experienced CNCI parts one, two, and who knows if we're going to come up on part three at some point. Um, we do not have, at least in the United States, I have not seen elsewhere, a grand cybersecurity strategy. And when, it, when they do talk about cybersecurity, it is, tends to be widget focused, thing focused. There is no, nobody's taking a look at it and say, no, this is much bigger. It includes all of the 
all the topics everybody else has been talking about, it has to be a counterinsurgency strategy, a much broader approach. So let's get. So part of the uh, existing body of work on insurgency, counterinsurgency, the first best work that is uh, generally known in Western culture on insurgency is Lawrence, T.E. T. Lawrence's, Lawrence of Arabia's Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Um, and prior to that, issuing out that book, he put out an article, 27, you know, in an Arab Times journal, I forget the name of it, Arab Journal, or an archaeological journal, uh, or an anthropological journal on Arab culture, called 27 Articles. And so arbitrarily, most everybody else who has written on insurgency or counterinsurgency has latched onto that and has followed that model. Since I am very good at borrowing other people's ideas, I've decided to go along with that route as well. Um, so these are 27 articles I propose not as dogma with an appropriate catechism to be followed. These are ideas. Um, these are, I think that we could all agree, oh, and if you don't agree, I'd love to talk to you about it, that these are all things that would have to be addressed at some point if we're going to be successful in countering the cyber insurgency. So first, cybersecurity is complexity, right? You cannot do a Cartesian system analysis or just come up with one great widget to solve this. Not going to do it. It's, it's complexity. You have to understand that. You're going to have to bring in other disciplines. Yeah, don't make it worse. The version of cyber is not a coherent effort, right? So the bad guys aren't one bad guy. You have different bad people doing things for different reasons. You treat them all the same, then you run the risk of driving people that were on the edge into more extremist positions, okay? So if some kid wants to download his music files and you come out down with him on a, with a huge hammer, that may push him into more black opportunities and, and into more radical behavior. You, so treat, if somebody's being a thief, treat him like a thief. If somebody's trying to, to do extremist and radical and violent things, then you treat them accordingly. But you don't treat everybody the same. Figure out what the different aspects are, disaggregate that, that threat, and treat the different parts appropriately. Make it harder to be bad. <coughs> this is probably the most important and least sexy aspect of the entire thing. Um, anything you can do to keep somebody from becoming radicalized, keep somebody from becoming one of the insurgents, is a win. So that's on the propaganda side, the messaging side. It's on the software assurance side. It's on all those basic coding principles. If you make it harder to do bad things, less people will do bad things. Okay? It's not going to be your own answer. You're not going to be able to patch your way out of this. However, if you make it more difficult to do the wrong thing, that's a good idea. You got to break the cycle, whatever cycle you want to count it as. The contagion, infection, and spread, if you want to use that model, or the um, crime, monetization, e extrapolation, whatever model you want to use. There's a cycle to this. We need to break this. Okay? So figure out a way, work into that action. And that cycle is going to vary by that disaggregated threat. Right? Criminal cycle is different than a radical cycle is different than a trip kitty cycle, these things. Ignore operational fundamentals at your own risk. Um, I'm going to try not to be too heavily reliant on US military planning process. However, you need a planning process. And you need a, you, you need a process that considers the different var the variations and how to come up with it. Also, that campaign planning where you have multiple types of operations. You don't just do one thing. You, 
you've set the table, right? You've controlled the parameters as best you can. You make your initial actions, and then you try and control what goes after that, and you have follow-on operations beyond that. Um, I could go into the specific military speak on that, but I'm, I'm trying really hard to avoid it because I want to make this more approachable. It, it's an ongoing process. It's not a one-off. And every operation you do, every plan that you have, has to link in with others and has to set the stage for the next operation. So you have your grand strategy. This is where we want to go. How do we get there? Well, we're going to set this up here. We're going, to, we're going to create this kind of environment. And then from that environment, we're going to move on to this and then the next. And that's how we're going to get to the strategy. At, along the way, things will change. And you will have to adjust your plans. Plans are nothing. Planning is everything. Being able to take that new, new situation, adapt to it, and move on, very key. Um, again, disaggregate the threat. Separate it out. I'm going to move along here because we don't want to go too much over time. Learn your business. Okay? It's not IT. It's not cybersecurity. Business is what, it, what does your organization do? Now, for some of you, your organization is selling cybersecurity to other businesses. But how do you sell that? You go to them and you say, all right, this is how it's going to make your business, your bottom line, this is how you're going to better return on your investment. This is how we're going to protect your property. This is how we're going to improve, uh, maintain your uh, uh, brand recognition and loyalty. That's the business, right? Because those are the people controlling the resources. Those are the people setting the corporate cultures. Those are the people who are going to get you to where you need to go. So you need to be able to sell the security as part of the business. That's the business. Um, users. Quit blaming them for everything. <laughs> All right. Human behavior is part of this. It has to be at the core of your thinking. All right. So will they frustrate you? Yes. Do you frustrate them? Yes. Understand that. Shrug it, <coughs> crack your neck, and move on. It, it's got to be part of the thinking. You've got to accommodate for that. <coughs> Friends, allies, you can't go at this alone, right? Cybersecurity is not going to be fixed by a cybersecurity specialist flipping a switch. Will that be part of it? Will it be a widget? That'll be part of it. Will it be? It's going to be everything. It's going to be the whole culture. It's going to be a combined effort to get us into a better place. And oh, by the way. The better place will never be perfect. We'll always have to be going further. Develop the environment. This goes beyond just your technical environment, right? Technical improvements that are part of the environment, business changes, cultural changes, um, model changes. And if your business model is fundamentally shifting, these are things you have to be aware of. Learn how to take advantage of them. Develop your subordinates. Um, this industry is not fantastic at developing subordinates. Actually, most industries aren't. There are a few that do better than others. Um, and we recruit great talent. You have to bring them up. You have to, not just on technical. We're very good at, at, tra at developing subordinates on technical stuff. It's the other aspects of it. It's the appreciation for the business side of it. It's the working with other people, those things have to be developed. Coop, coop, coop. Bad things happen. We know this. Do we do anything about it? Not so much. We should. Because that's where the gaps show up and bad things happen. Rational metrics. There is no perfect metric. There's no silver bullet. Not one thing you're going to measure and say, got there, we're done. Won't happen. You're probably, I've never seen anybody happy with the metrics that they have. We're completely in, in, in content with them. But take the ones you, you can use, use them, develop, and work on better ones. Seize the initiative. This is, um, this is a difficult one in this space, right? Um, since the, it's, it varies from a physical space where you can have a little bit more control of the, the environment. But by seizing the initiative, um, it, the point was made earlier, if you are 
if you look tougher to break into than somebody else, they're going to go somewhere else. The hedgehog approach to defense. If you just look annoying and, and just too much of a hassle to bother with, they don't bother with you. They go somewhere else. That's the idea there. So that's one way to seize the initiative. Just keep on top of things, make yourself difficult to be taken as a target. Just an adapt, fairly self explanatory. Um, but one aspect is you'll, you'll have, if you're good, you have standard operating procedures, revisit those periodically. Right? And, and, and adapt accordingly. It, too often you, you come up with a great SOP, and then four or five years later, nobody's looked at it, things have changed, and it's no longer a great SOP. Um, learn your networks, that's straightforward. What are the threats for your particular business? Right? Not everybody faces the same kinds of threats. Not everybody understands the threats that they do face. Learn this. Uh, there's, there's information out there, there's experts out there that can give you a great deal of information about what to expect. May surprise you. How are the resources allocated in your organization? This is important, right? You're going to need resources. You're going to need to make a business case to get those resources. Who do you have to influence to do that? You know, just getting up and shouting, I need more, doesn't work. Right? So, yeah, this is, this is one of those not so sexy but has to be done kind of things. You need, to, you need to figure out how to influence your organization to get what you need. I'm going to be done early. <laughs> Legal authorities. Something happens. Who do you talk to? You talk to different people for different things, most likely. You know who they are. Have you ever talked to them before? Depending on your organization, um, you know, if you've got potential multi-million dollar liabilities, if you get had, you should probably talk to some of the legal authorities before you have to call them. Okay? Build up a relationship there. Your operating authorities, what do you get to do? What is your position? What can you pull off? If it is not adequate, if you do not have adequate authorities, find out why and see if you can fix it. Or is there somebody that you need to team up with that will augment you as, as your ally and provide the adequate authorities to get what you need to do in response to a situation? Forensic needs. Anyway, <coughs> if we're going to take this to a, and provide evidence to Take the bad guys down. What do you need to have? Are you, do your logs have it? Question, ask that question before you have to try and take it to a lawyer. Um, communicate up and down the chain. Um, learn how to talk to the bosses and give them what they need, not everything, <laughs> what they need. And different bosses are different. What, it's good if you have a, that threshold defined. What do I call you in the middle of the night and wake you up for, boss? Right? What, what is that, what's that threshold? When, when things go bad, how bad is it before I call you? Um, down the chain, right? You keep complaining about, the, if you complain about the users all the time, make sure the users know what you need, need from them, right? And if something go, is going wrong, let them know why. Yeah, you know, make them part of the team. The global society. Um, yeah. One little gripe, everybody's gripe is global now, right? So where you could uh, get away with a certain level of cultural insensitivity 20 years ago because that other culture would never see what you did, that's not the case anymore. You have to be a little bit more aware. I'm not saying paranoid and never do anything and, and just sit on your thumbs, but be aware of where you are. Right? Um, if you can keep a point of friction from becoming a point of contention, you have, not, you, you have saved yourself a lot more worry down the line. Right? Don't ditch the Westphalian model out of hand. Right? Not gone yet. <laughs> Um, and it, it's worked for a few things. Slavery. Um, you know, 
it has had some benefits, right? Um, and there's a lot of power there, right? Nation states still have a fair amount of power. Um, is it funky, hard to adjust, and ham-handed? Most times, yes. However, it's not to be ignored. Police versus the Army. Big difference. Big fundamental difference. The police are of the people and for the people, or should be. The Army kills people and breaks things. It's an it's a instrument of blunt force. Yes, we talk about surgical strikes, and we have gotten a lot better at it. And warfare today compared to warfare 30, 40, 50 years ago is far more precise and, you know, fewer innocent lives are lost. But it is not a clean antiseptic thing. The Army, so when you start talking about nation-state cyber forces, you're going to have a similar parallel where you bring in the big guns, big things happen. <laughs> And the people don't tend to like that over any extended period of time. That's why police is much more effective at police functions. Don't try and use one for the other. Vice versa, if you've got a big problem, if you've got a nation state level problem, police don't have the resources to deal with that. So you have to bring in the big guns. Knowing what the two are, know that there's a difference, and know that you need both types of force. Absolutely necessary. Hang on, though. Yep. How does the policeman know it's an attack from a foreign state? What's his investigation? Well, not when it starts, but at some point, should hit the, should get to that information. Still might be a police matter. Still might be. It might just be a national police matter. Well, and that goes to the next one. Develop and gain buy-in for the rules of cyber warfare. Okay? Whether you believe it or not, there are rules for land warfare, rules for sea warfare, even rules for space warfare, but those are kind of sketchy. Right? And for the most part, they're followed. And the rules are there for a reason, and they're good reasons. We need that for cyber warfare. There have been some very abortive attempts so far. We need to continue to do this. And this would help with the definition for the police and what makes it an act of cyber warfare. All right? This, and this is more important, I think, more immediate than most people think. Right? Um, there have been a number of exercises at the national level where the exercise ad is bad guys doing stuff, and the DOD rep sitting there going, yeah, what do you want me to do about it? Because they weren't going after a government target, going after a national industry, going after a, where does it kick off? What's the tripwire that says, this is now a national thing, I'm going to bring the full weight and force of the, the Department of Defense, Ministry of Defense, or you know, whichever, to bear on this issue? Yes, sir. Surely that's the same problem that Stunning's having, where the feds would hold people less than $70,000. We knew, pretty sure, that it was subject to East European library. They create a disinformation campaign, but same problem. Really. Basically, yeah. the first cyber warfare event they attempted like university hope of and fed a load of trash. So the FBI said, "Well, we can't touch it because that's a redefine it." And that's the problem that will redefine We do have to redefine it. And because there are, the cyberspace has enabled activities which nobody envisioned before, right? In a physical world, stealing that data was completely different than in a, in a cyber event. But this is one where the analog does not hold and that we have to redefine it. And that's, that's why I made a separate point there, is it has to be redefined. And then the 27th article is we need Peel's principles for our cyber police. Okay? And this is where I cheated because then I came up with the next day. <laughs> um, as I went over these again, 
I was embarrassed to see how few of these were actually followed by U.S. police departments. Um, but the main point of this, I mean, the takeaway is, the police have to be complete partners with the population. If the police do not have the confidence of the population, if they not welcome the population, they're not very effective police. So how do we do this in cyber? Well, I'm not giving any ideas here. <laughs> I'm more than willing to listen. Uh, but this is something that we're going we need to develop. Maybe we're precluded from it because the Chinese have the death sentence for their non-state sponsored, state sponsored hackers that report, which precludes us in the UK sharing because they'd be subject to the death sentence if prosecuted. So I don't know if you had the same issue, because you used to have the death sentence. But if you were, assuming they did, to pursue a hacker in China over a policeman with the death sentence, the outcome for hacking, does that give you a problem? Okay, I don't know about the death sentence aspect of it, but I know that there have been times where U.S. police authorities have cracked back to China in an attempt to... Uh, and not just at a State Department level saying, bad Chinese, stop, uh, but actual police the organizations going back and saying, we need to do this. And in China, um, I, don't, I, I, I might mistake, they, they have um, a, re a clearer idea of jurisdiction over cyber yeah. crimes. I, but I'm not going to go any further under that because I'll misstate. I don't want to do that. Um, uh, but, yeah, they have to be full partners. Yes, ma'am. So, in your first bullet point, you have the basic mission to prevent crime and disorder. Oh, by the way, I stole all of these. These are not, none of these are mine. No, okay. that's fine. Yeah. It, it, it seems to me that, at least currently in the United States, that's a proactive approach, and our law enforcement mm -hmm. uses more of a reactive approach. It's yes. an entirely different mind frame, an entirely different set of... of Things they need to go through in their training. I mean, most of their training, most of their academies all focus on how do we mm -hmm. react to crime? How do we investigate crime? Not how do we see what crimes might occur? Yeah. How do we help to prevent those crimes from stop, you know, stop those crimes? Pretty okay. scary, yeah. isn't it? But I think there's fairly a right. right in terms of mm -hmm. now that change. We're probably 15 years into that. And there's yeah, because we, we've gone so far the wrong direction with Ferguson and other places that people are finally beginning to go, huh? What about this? There, there are some great, you know, like population or problem oriented controlling and stuff like that. That There is a lot of theory on how do you know, mm -hmm. work with the community stuff like that. So we don't want to say just straight off the bat that they're only reactive. They are doing certain things that are proactive as well. But I mean, you know, we have resources and then, you know, uh, Corruption in different in different areas does make it difficult. Nobody's yeah. but to where they should. Be. I think you, you even see this in media, right? Think back. Well, some of some of us can think back to the dragnet days and, and you know, Adam Twelve, and and where the police weren't always in car chases and gunfights, where they weren't always, you know, starting with the body and moving backwards from there, where, where you actually saw some preventative policing. Like principle nine, if it was a Saudi religious police, they're very good at keeping their population. Don't see any visible evidence. Therefore, by your definition, they're doing quite well. Um, you do see quite a bit of it. You see yeah. the reaction among the population to uh, things like the driving bans with the rise of Uber. You see. I was thinking of Saudi Arabia. Well, documents are there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you do see yeah. crime and disorder there. That's why they have, you know, the guys going around. But is this placement as well? Yeah. Yes, sir. Being well, be instructive to textualize the human principles. These were principles created in the field of the government's societally necessary in England, particularly. Transient them, organize them, get a police force, but in time, the populace was deeply and rightly threatened of the creation, at the creation of large state sanctioned armed force that could be deployed for 
Oh, there's no cyber corollary there at all. That's good. So if you design <laughs> these principles to address precisely those concerns, to arrive at negotiated compromise between societal imperatives to preserve the Queen's peace, quote unquote, to do this in a manner that whereby the population has peace, and that's really at the heart mm. of the Pelian construct. But it works. It works. Well, it by consent. Time works and sound, and that's the important thing. Not a golf in chop chop square chopping heads off, then they're in breach of line. That's all I have. Um, so follow me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, all right. <laughs> all right. I found one of his rounds recently. Really? Of, uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I can't yeah, the battle. Uh, uh, it was the train. The his larger train ambush. Um, where they they questioned whether or not he had actually been involved, and they found spent casings from that only his pistol would have had. <laughs> yeah, and then they also found uh, the brass faceplate off the train. It yes. had been given to a, it, he had given it to a friend, and then went and crashed his motorcycle, so never got it back. Resurfaced. So, absent of any further questions. Um, I will uh, move on. Thank you very much.